Uh, my name is Brian Miller. I am the CEO and co-founder of Sentient Biotechnologies. So we're a little bit different and a little bit similar from what uh, Devin was describing with Sigalon. Uh, our technology platform is using uh, a mesenchymal stromal cell, MSC. And Devin, thank you for the promotional material that, that it has been a problem with MSCs that when they're infused, they don't last very long. And that's really the, the, the engineering problem that we set out to address. What is known about MSCs is their ability to reprogram the blood and really have an immunomodulating anti-inflammatory effect. So we're targeting indications that are really focused on uh, an overreactive inflammatory response to primary tissue injury, initially in the acute organ failure space. We are a clinical stage venture-backed company. Uh, we have a phase one, two ongoing for acute kidney injury requiring dialysis. And we have an interim analysis that we've just completed literally like two weeks ago. Uh, we supported our overall therapeutic hypothesis. I'll show you a little bit of data around that. And we're starting a Series B financing uh, to advance that program and expand our clinical pipeline. So what's been known about MSCs and why they've been viewed as so broadly uh, theoretically having high potential as a lot of uh, complex biology requires, cell therapies are, are custom made for looking at a polypharmacy type approach where you're modulating mo lots of different pathways at the same time, again, in a very complex uh, pathophysiological situation. MSCs are known to do this. They secrete a bunch of factors that collectively have uh, a tissue repair and regenerative response. But as importantly, for these complex diseases, cells dynamically respond to their microenvironment. This is well known with MSCs as well that they'll become licensed in the presence of pro-inflammatory mediators and produce anti-inflammatory factors in response, almost like a self-tuning type mechanism. The challenge has been uh, short therapeutic exposure. So it's the secreted factors from MSCs that are providing the benefit, but as a transplant, you don't have very long exposure for these MSCs to do their work. You're taking a, a naturally adherent cell and putting it into an, uh, in a non-adherent state. It's asking quite a bit of the cell to have its therapeutic effect. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we're looking for, or we found a different way to administer these cells that preserves both this uh, viability, uh, broad acting nature, and dynamic responsiveness. And it's through this combination product where we're taking a hollow fiber device, so think of a, a, like a, a plasmapheresis filter, and the cells are naturally adherent to the outside of these fibers akin to a blood vessel. The blood flows through the inside of these fibers, and there's bi-directional communication between the cells and the blood compartment. You do this in a way where the cells stay outside of the body for the duration of treatment. You get uh, longer cell viability, you get their dynamic responsiveness, and generally speaking, you have a longer area under the curve exposure of the secreted factors. So it gives you longer viability and exposure. Like I mentioned, there's a side benefit. Uh, as engineers, we like these types of things. From the device perspective, as blood is flowing through this device, we can actually sample the cellular compartment and characterize what the cells are doing during treatment. So from a cell therapy perspective, if you contrast that with an infused cell, there's really nothing left to measure from a PK perspective. In our situation, we're measuring, and I'll show a little bit of, uh, actually not, not in this deck, but we have data supporting that these cells are producing factors over a period of time and dynamically responding as we suspect they were. So as this gets implemented into the clinical setting as a combination cellular device, we are incorporating it into several indications where add-on therapies are standard of care. Things like dialysis where acute kidney injury, uh, standard of care for dialysis uh, offers us an opportunity to be an add-on there. But also ECMO, photodynamic therapy, and apheresis applications. All told, this is about a million patients per year in the U.S. treated by these modalities that all have an inflammatory component uh, characterizing the indication. So the therapeutic hypothesis, again, is really these MSCs producing these factors. There's an anti-inflammatory uh, uh, upregulation of anti-inflammatory cytokines, a downregulation of pro-inflammatory cytokines, collectively leading to uh, reprogramming of the immune cell compartment. And what we'll show is uh, a little bit of data in our phase one, two for AKI requiring dialysis, obviously looking at safety as the primary endpoint, but also these exploratory biomarkers. And what we have is evidence in each of these three categories, the MSCs are secreting factors, the molecular changes in the peripheral blood is taking place, and we see immune cell reprogramming. So what I'm showing here is just a, a little teaser. We're, again, still pulling this data together, but happy to show it offline are two simple examples of the middle column where you have pro-inflammatory mediators uh, like TNF-alpha being reduced in our treated population and anti-inflammatory markers like IL-10 being upregulated in our treated population. 
What's important to note in the blue shaded section is the 24-hour perfusion period that we're treating these patients. After that, the product is removed, but the effects that you start to see beginning during that time are durable over seven days. What that's suggesting is you do have immune cell reprogramming taking place, providing that durability of response, and we have cellular data uh, not shown here that also supports that. So where this takes us from a, a clinical development perspective with the safety profile and AKI uh, being established, we'd like to move into other indications that also have this uh, intrinsic inflammatory response as part of the primary tissue injury, things like trauma, ARDS, burns, and liver failure. Move those into phase two studies uh, as we develop this, this overall platform across systemic inflammatory disorders. Moving to a target label that really looks at acute organ failure in the presence of the systemic inflammation. So in summary, uh, SBI 101, our lead program, is designed to really treat these complex uh, immune-mediated inflammatory disorders. Our preliminary human data is supportive of this therapeutic hypothesis, and we're really excited to raise a Series B and expand uh, both the clinical development pipeline for AKI and move that forward, as well as enter into new indications. So I apologize. I have to run right after this, after Tom and I have a little chat. Uh, Chris Jamidi is here with our company if you have any other questions, or you can reach out to me as well. Thank you. Anybody has a burning question, you can raise your hand. <laughs> so, so, so thank you, Brian. I, I, what is your starting material? What is the manufacturing process? Is it clonal? Is it a mixture? Um, yeah, so it is a bone marrow-derived allogeneic cell type. Uh, so we take uh, from a bone marrow donor, expand it multiple times. The manufacturing uh, is really two steps. So there's the, the MSC expansion. Uh, we put those in liquid nitrogen, and then there's a second fill finish step upon uh, identification of a patient where we take the hollow fiber device, inoculate the cells, package, and ship in a rapid release time frame. Okay. Uh, and then presumably you're using cells because you expect multiple things need to be done. H have purified factors been tried? Do you have some leads about what's important? Are you worried that eventually you'll just teach the world? what conventional factors should be added. It is, it's yeah, just... I'm not worried about that so much. We had uh, early days, uh, we had some advisors from MIT say, you better make sure that there aren't just five factors that will solve this problem. So I think the answer to that question is really twofold. It, it's very complex biology. People have tried single factor agents, even, even combinations, and haven't shown effect in these complex diseases. But I think the other aspect that's important about cell therapy is when you administer. As these patients are, are fluctuating through a very unstable profile in their inflammatory milieu, these cells are, are self-tuning to what, what's in the blood. And so you can get, and what we see is these cells are changing dynamically in response to the patient. With a single factor static therapy, you're going to have a hard time replicating the, the timing of that uh, administration as well. So it's a more robust therapeutic window, I think, that we have with something like this. Okay, so, so you've commented you have data you're happy with. Yes. Is it, is it mostly molecular readouts you have? And the question is, as you condition the blood, you th do you know what you're looking for? And I, I, what I'm really getting at is, how good is the chance of a surrogate endpoint mm. where you're going to have to save kidneys down the road? Yeah. So again, with MSCs, the, the literature is pretty well established over the last 30 years about what MSCs do. And the responses that we saw uh, no one's ever measured what MSCs are doing in situ during treatment. As they've been transplanted, you can't really measure those things. So that's new data. Uh, with the molecular response in the peripheral blood, again, it's very consistent with what you'd expect from MSCs. But we also have cellular data from the peripheral blood, again, consistent with what you'd expect from MSCs. I think on a surrogate biomarker endpoint, uh, that's probably still a little ways off, more from tying the inflammatory profile to AKI outcomes, which has not been as well established. Um, so I think at the end of the day, docs believe that the reduction of inflammation is going to be important for prognosis, but it's probably not validated to the point where a surrogate biomarker is going to be available to us in the near term. So is it C-reactive protein? Is it that class of things that you're likely the, to be looking for? Those are the kinds of things that we're seeing. Acute phase protein like CRP as well was something that we saw go down. Uh, so again, we're very encouraged by what we're seeing. Okay. And as you move forward, you're kind of in the dialysis arena which is pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty much a, a, not a monopoly, but pretty close. Do you need a partner to move forward? Could you do this on your own? So at some point, I think there's, uh, there's looking at the acute space and the chronic space. Yep. And we're focused on the acute space to start with. It's more tractable for a small company like ours. 
uh, the big dialysis manufacturers look at what we're doing and think about applications in the outpatient chronic setting, and that could be a really uh, disruptive, decommoditizing event for that industry. As we demonstrate what we want to do in the acute setting, I think that will open up opportunities in the chronic space as well, but that's a longer program for us. So is that a different space, is acute phase dialysis, is that a different facility? Yeah, we're, we're in the ICU, uh, oh, okay. so these patients are, are very captive to a, a continuous perfusion like what we're doing right now. And does that mean you're not, in the, the bundle is an evil word in my, uh, in my world, it's, right. are you outside the we bundle? We are outside of the bundle, yes. There is no acute Thankfully bundle. Thankfully outside of the bundle, yes. <laughs> Okay, any, any questions from the audience here? A couple more minutes. Um, so maybe talk about other indications. Sure. I mean, one I know that's extremely inflammatory is heart surgery. Have you, have you thought about that one? So AKI is a common complication coming out of heart surgery where the inflammatory component can, uh, kidney is kind of one of the more sensitive organs, so it's one of the first to go. Um, and we're not an AKI company, right? We are a systemic inflammation right. company. So as we think about um, moving outside of the ICU, I guess what I'll describe are applications in the chronic setting where you think about patients with neurodegenerative diseases with an inflammatory and auto-inflammatory component. Could we treat patients in a plasmapheresis type setting? We think we can. It'll take a different type of dosing paradigm than what we're doing on this continuous perfusion, but moving down that road is absolutely where we'd like to go. Uh, so this idea of reprogramming the immune system, I think for a company like ours to look at the acute setting, where there's larger deltas to be uh, appreciated early on uh, with one single dose. Uh, again, I think it was really compelling for us to see a treatment period of 24 hours perfusion and out to seven days we're still seeing effects. And so that's really encouraging. One of the things we do in the, in the chronic setting is say, you know, with a, a shorter perfusion time, what's the durability of response and how you think about that dose durability thing would be a program that we'd have to, to take on in, in a clinic or preclinically. Okay, and then uh, one design question. Presumably, if you're kind of hooked into dialysis, you don't want to, you can't fool with the flow rate, right? That is, that w is what it is, the, yep. the process you have to deal with stuff. How did you decide when you had enough sort of cells to do what you need? I understand it's a yeah, little so vague question. There, no, that's, that's a good one, actually. There was math involved. Okay. And so we went in and looked at why MSEs have failed preclinically over and over again. In a large part, some of the math that worked out was uh, basically stoichiometry between MSEs and effector cells. Right. And in the small animal models that you often see, you get a ratio in the one to two, two to one range. And when you scale that up to humans and you're putting MSEs into five liters of volume, you lose those ratios. It becomes one to a thousand. So it's not surprising if you're thinking about MSC is trying to create this cytokine-rich milieu to have an effect on, uh, on T cells, for example, that you might not see that when you're putting it into five liters of blood. In our bioreactor, it's 110 mils of volume. So you're getting every 20 minutes, depending on the flow rate, uh, you're getting an activated T cell coming through that cytokine-rich environment, conditioning it over and over as it cycles through the blood system. In that volume, you're still at this one-to-one, two-to-one ratio. So we've put the number of cells in the device to preserve that stoichiometry that it was observed effectively preclinically in a lot of different models. We're recreating that essentially in, in this extracorporeal device. Mm, amazing, okay. Uh, if there are no other questions, we're out of time. So thank you very right. much. Thank Another you. beautiful story. Thank you.